Hey there, and welcome to my tutorial on how to make a simple project task manager in Google Sheets. With this template, you can track the progress of up to 20 projects all in one place. You can store any number of tasks associated with any project, set a priority, easily assign due dates, and update the status. Okie dokie, now that you know what we're building, let's get to it. Starting with a blank spreadsheet, begin by selecting columns G through Z. Then right click on the column headers and delete the columns. Next, click here in this box, which is called the name box. Type in 22 colon 1000 and press enter. This will select rows 22 through 1000 and you can delete them by right clicking on the row headers and delete. After that, select rows 1 through 21, right click, resize rows, set the size to 30, and click OK. Then click here and change the vertical alignment to middle. Now select row 1, bold the font, click the fill color button, and add a light blue fill color. Awesome. At this point, right click on the worksheet tab and select duplicate to create a copy. Then rename the first sheet to projects and rename the second sheet to tasks. Okay, let's start with the projects worksheet. Select column A, right click, resize columns change the size to 150, and click OK. Then select columns B through F, right click, resize columns, change the size to 125, and click OK. Also change the horizontal alignment to center. Now select the range B2 through F21. Bold the font, change the font color to blue, and add this light gray fill color. That does it for the formatting, so now select cell A1 and type in project. Then in B1, type in to do, then in progress, done, percent complete, and chart. Finally, type in a few sample project names like so. And once you've added some sample projects, select the range A2 through A21, and then click here in the name box. Type in project list with no spaces and press enter. This creates what's called a range name that will always refer back to this range here on the project's worksheet. And the range name is going to help us create a drop-down list later on. That being said, we need to create one more range name. So select B1 through D1, click in the name box, type in status list, and press enter. Okay. That does it for the project's worksheet for now. We're going to come back at the end to add in some formulas, but right now go ahead and move on to the tasks worksheet. Select columns A and B, then hold control and also select columns D and E. Then right click, resize columns, change the size to 150 and click OK. Select column C, right click, resize columns, change the size to 85, and click OK. Select column F, right click, resize columns, change the size to 300, and click OK. Then select columns C through F, and change the horizontal alignment to center. Next, select cell A1 and type in task, then project, priority, due date, status, and notes. 
then go ahead and type in a few sample tasks like so. Now let's create some drop-down lists that will make it easier to assign projects, priorities, and status updates. Start by selecting B2 through B21, and then go to Data, Data Validation. In the panel on the right, click on Add Rule, and under Criteria, select Dropdown from a Range. Then in the box below, type in Project List, which is the range name that we created earlier, and press Enter. You should then see all of the project options show up here. Now below, click on Advanced Options. For the project selection, I personally like to change the display style to arrow, but if you like the chip style better, you're welcome to leave it that way. And then, either way, click on Done. You can now easily assign projects to your various tasks like so. Next is the priority column, so go ahead and select C1 through C21, and then under data validation rules, click on add rule. Leave the criteria set to drop down, and change the options to 1, 2, 3, and 4 like so. You are also welcome to set this up differently if you want to use something other than 1, 2, 3, and 4. Either way, once you have your priority options set, you can then assign a color to each. Just select the gray circle next to the option that you want to customize, and select the style that you want. You can then repeat this process for each other option like so. And once you're finished, you can click on Done. Okie dokie, let's do the status column next. Select E2 through E21, then click on Add a Rule, select drop down from a range, type in Status List, and press Enter. You can then customize each status with the color of your choice. And finally, click on Done. You can then assign statuses to each task like so. All right, now let's focus on the due date column. We are going to add data validation to this column so that it only accepts date values. So select D1 through D21, click on add a rule, and under criteria, select is valid date. You can then click OK. Now this is the cool part. Since we added data validation for only valid dates, Look at what happens when you double click on one of these cells. Google Sheets pulls up this date picker, making it super easy to add dates to your tasks. And of course, you can still type in your dates manually if you'd rather do that. Now, you might notice that the format is a little inconsistent though. Luckily, we can adjust the number formatting so that all dates look the same way. Just select D1 through D21, click the More Formats button here, and select Date. This will keep everything looking consistent. And with that, we are done with the Tasks worksheet. So go ahead and move back to the Projects tab. Here we're going to add in the formulas that will calculate the totals for each project in our list. So start by selecting cell B2 and enter the following formula. Equals count ifs function tasks exclamation point dollar sign b dollar sign two colon dollar sign b next argument dollar sign a two next argument tasks exclamation point dollar sign e dollar sign two, colon, dollar sign E, next argument, B, dollar sign one, close parentheses, and press enter. Then use the fill handle to copy the formula over to column D, and then down to row 21. 
And by the way, if you're having trouble getting this formula to work and live in a country where you use commas as the decimal separator rather than a period, then in your formula, you need to replace all of the commas with semicolons like so. Now, if we take a closer look at the formula in cell B2, we can see that it counts the number of tasks on the task worksheet that match the project in A2 and status in B1. And we added the dollar signs so that the references change appropriately whenever we copy the formula over to the rest of the cells. For example, the references to the ranges on the task worksheet stay the same, which is why there are dollar signs in front of each part of the reference, and we always reference the project name in column A, which is why there's a dollar sign in front of the A, and we always reference the appropriate status in row 1, which is why there is a dollar sign in front of the 1. Okie dokie, that does it for those formulas. So now, select cell E2 and enter the following. Equals if function D2 equals 0, next argument, 0, next argument, D2 divided by sum function B2 colon D2, close parentheses, close parentheses, and press enter. Then use the fill handle to copy the formula down to row 21. This formula calculates the percentage of tasks that are done compared to the total number of tasks. And with that, we have one more formula to go. Select cell F2 and enter the following. Equals sparkline function E2 Next argument, open bracket, quote, chart type, quote, comma, quote, bar, quote, semicolon, quote, max, quote, comma, one, semicolon, quote, color one, quote, comma, quote, green, quote, close bracket, close parentheses, and press enter. And by the way, if you've been entering semicolons instead of commas due to your location, then your formula is going to look like this instead. Just something to be aware of. All right, once you have the formula written, Use the fill handle to copy it down to row 21. Okie dokie. To finish up, we're just going to make a few changes to the number formatting. So first, let's focus on the percentages. Select E2 through E21. Click the percentage button here. And then you can reduce the decimal places by using this button. Next, select B2 through D21. Click the More Formats button here, and select Custom Number Format. In the window that appears, clear the contents in this box. Then, enter 0, semicolon, minus 0, semicolon, dash, semicolon, at symbol. And then, click Apply. This changes the number formatting so that the zeros show up as dashes, making everything a little bit easier to see. And just like that, you are done with the spreadsheet. Well, I hope you had fun and learned a thing or two along the way. And if you enjoyed the content, give the video a like or even consider subscribing. Either way, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon in the next Spreadsheet Life video. You're like a circle that floats around me, keeping me safe and sound. And when I fall, you tie the rope.